So you're wondering what browsers support service workers? Well, this is a common question we see asked when we're out talking about service workers in progressive web apps, and we see it asked a lot in online forums like Stack Overflow and Quora. And that's what we're going to answer here in this video today. Hey guys, Chris Love, owner of Love to Dove here, and today we're going to talk about service worker support. Now we are obviously big fans of service workers because we're huge champions of progressive web apps. And we love service workers because they enable so many great features to be native in the browser. In particular, they give you a rich mechanism to make your application work offline. Browsers are starting to implement push notifications as well as background sync capabilities. This isn't where things are going to be limited to because new specs and ideas are being fleshed out and hopefully will be uh, delivered in browsers and platforms in the near future. But a big question we get asked when we're out talking about service workers and we also see online a lot is what kind of support do I have out there for service workers? What browsers support service workers? And effectively, how many potential customers have browsers that will use these service workers? So that's what we're going to try to answer here today. And I want to start off by looking at a great resource maintained by Jake Archibald. Now, Jake is one of the uh, web's big champions of service workers and progressive web apps. So we really enjoy his humor and stuff when he's presenting these topics. But he maintains this site called Service Worker, Is Service Worker Ready? And basically what he does is he goes through all the different dependencies and feature um, paths that service workers need in order to effectively be supported. And before I go down his list, I'm just going to review a few things. First, service workers are dependent on browsers supporting promises natively. And if you aren't familiar with promises, they are a coding convention that allow um, some, uh, kind of a simple way to do asynchronous programming. Uh, I won't get into the details of promises. We'll produce some kind of like a primer or something like that on it soon. There are many resources available to get you, get your head wrapped, wrapped around promises if you haven't already started using them. Next, service workers need to have fetch supported. If you haven't heard of fetch, it's also relatively new, and it is a modern replacement of the standard uh, AJAX stack that we use. AJAX is based on the XML HTTP request object, and it's uh, you know it was written about uh, 12, 13 years ago. It's a little clunky, so to speak, in coding uh, parlance, but uh, it. Uh, it uses callbacks and some crazy coding conventions. It's really not that hard to do, but it's just not that clean to do either. Fetch simplifies the AJAX process and turns it into a promise-based object, which makes it a whole lot easier to make asynchronous code. And this is important because service workers uh, need to work with asynchronous code. And if you haven't really dove into uh, service workers. Uh, they are an event-driven experience or coding, or coding provision or whatever. I, anyway, they're driven by events. So um, like you um, would attach an event handler to the fetch event, which is where any request to the network is going to pass through your service worker, and you can intercept that request in the fetch event. So that's one of the reasons why fetch is required. Um, you're not going to have access to the XML HTTP request object inside of a service worker, but you can use the fetch API. So hence the hard dependency on fetch being supported. So anyway, so fetch is required. We'll talk a little bit about fetch in, in another video. And then uh, I would also consider another third key requirement, which browsers don't have a problem supporting those because they've been supporting it for decades, is HTTPS. And, uh, the problem here is that the vast majority of websites still do not implement HTTPS, and that's very unfortunate. Now, we released a video a couple of weeks ago on five reasons why you should implement HTTPS today. And service workers 
was one of those reasons. In fact, browsers are starting to gate access to more and more APIs behind HTTPS. So you definitely need to implement HTTPS. If you want to learn a little more about why, go check out our video. So that I would consider those like three of the key things that service workers are dependent on that browsers must support. So that's just review, promises, the fetch API, and HTTPS. All right, so the first thing that Jake lists here on is service worker ready is general enthusiasm. What kind of attitude do different browsers have about service workers? And I love the way he kind of breaks it out. He puts the different logo, uh, browser logos here, and you can just quickly glance. The green background means that they're really behind it. And as you can see, that's pretty much all of them. The one outlier is Apple Safari and we don't have no clue what Apple's position is. Um, they have shown up to the actual um, specification discussion meetings and done some participation. However, if you are familiar with the way Apple works with the web standardization processes, they don't really work very friendly with it. Um, the way they implement and deliver these specifications typically is they keep quiet, keep quiet, and then suddenly it just ships. And that's kind of how we find out if they're going to support it or not. The reason why I think he put yellow back there is because they have shown up to the meetings and there is speculation and it's just an, it's just complete speculation is that they are going to try to implement service workers uh, sooner rather than later. I suspect if we find out anytime soon, it will probably be this fall because that's usually when they do uh, a release that would possibly have that in there. And another one on the other side is uh, Microsoft Edge. I know personally that the Edge team is super excited about service workers and they are working fast and furiously to get service worker support built in. If you have the Windows 10 Insider Ring and you can go into the About flags inside of the uh, developer tool, so just hit F12 and you can go in there or you can hit the about uh, colon whack whack flags, something like that I think. Anyway, um, there's an option to turn on service worker support. Just let me forewarn you, it's probably a little buggy, so it may not be the best experience, but it'll get you uh, some experiences to where they're at right now. Now, um, so that's, that's enthusiasm. Just to prove the point, uh, if you aren't aware, the Microsoft Edge team maintains this site here that shows all the browser support for different specifications, and I isolated in on service worker features. And I totally forgot when I went into my dependencies, um, service workers also need the cache API, uh, which is another new API, which is uh, how you make things work offline. So, um, as you can see right now, the Cache API is currently in development, and if we scroll down, service workers are also in development. And you can see that there are over 6,000 votes on their user voice on features that Edge should focus on. And that's actually one of the top feature requests in Microsoft Edge right now is service worker support. So we love the fact that the developer community at large uh, is showing uh, great enthusiasm for service workers as well. But you can you can look at just about anything. You can filter it out by a lot of different features. I invite you to go to, uh, you can get there easier than that URL up there, status.modern.ie will take you to this page. And they've actually visualized things quite nicely as well. Um, they've got all kinds of information available to you. We'll go over this in another video, uh, but it's a great resource for you. Another one to go look at is can I use? You can usually type in a particular a API and can I use will give you a nice grid showing support. I'm curious as to why these are kind of off green instead of fully green because usually they're nice solid green not this kind of yellowish green. Uh, and not to, it doesn't really go into details about why they aren't necessarily uh, getting the full spec support. But as you can see there's a little bit of red on there. Really it's limited to Edge and Safari and like I said um, that edge will turn, turn to green probably by the end of the year, I would imagine. I'm hoping that it ships with the creator's update this summer, 
So just stay tuned for that. Um, Opera Mini's never going to support it. If you understand my Opera Mini, that is a proxy browser. And in a essence, when you make a request there, what they do is they request the file on their server, and then they actually send an optimized JPEG down to the browser. And those are really for feature phones. Um, this kind of stuff's really not going to be targeting that audience anyway. So anyway, all right, let's go back to is service worker ready just to go down. Again, I mentioned promises is a big deal. All the browsers now support promises. That's been there for a little while, so we don't have any concerns uh, on that level. Oh, and if you're wondering what this purple one is, this is the Samsung browser, and they have their own version of WebKit that they ship, and they have really amped up their uh, evangelism game and involvement with developers over the last few years, and I really want to just just take a little side note and just uh, applaud them for doing that and uh, and kind of joining the game. They obviously have a huge presence in the Android uh, mobile marketplace. Now, as far as uh, being able to debug service workers, this refers to being able to open the F12 tools and like step through code and, and some other features that you're going to need in order to be able to kind of work and troubleshoot your service workers before you deploy them. Right now, that's really limited to Chrome, Firefox, and Opera, and they all have nice developer experiences. Now, uh, navigator.serviceworker, that's essentially the pro property that you would reference to register a service worker in your code. And, of course, you can see that uh, the Chrome, Firefox, Opera, and Samsung are the ones that support that. Um, and then the ability to post messages back and forth. Uh, right now, Firefox and Samsung are the, offer full support, where Chrome and Opera have partial support. If you're not familiar with that, it's a way to communicate back and forth to a service worker. Um, if you did any web worker uh, coding, uh, it's going to be a very similar process. Again, remember, a service worker is going to be an event-driven um, thing. It does not have access to the DOM or the window uh, thread, or the actual UI thread. So what you have to do is you essentially you, you have to post messages back and forth. And um, so that's going to be the communica communication mechanism between the front and the back, so to speak. And of course, we, we need to support the fetch event because we need to intercept, we need to be able to possibly intercept all the requests to the network. And of course, those four browsers again support it. And you can see as we go down pretty much anything uh, related to the fetch and fetch event, they all have good support. You also get the install event, which when you understand service workers, that's part of the life cycle that you need to possibly check on. Uh, the skip waiting allows a service worker to kind of uh, go ahead and take, a, take control. Uh, if you're replacing a previous version, you can see Opera is the only one that currently doesn't support that. Um, I like that feature because uh, if I don't have essentially a, a, an application schema change, it, it allows my service worker to just update a lot faster. Um, we'll talk, we talk about that more in our course on service workers uh, and the whole life cycle. And again, the next event in the life cycle is the activate event. And then you can see uh, the client claim and so forth, um, update checks. You can see Opera's not getting the life cycle because they don't have the skip waiting piece there. Um, of course, with fetch, you got the request and response objects. Where they're supported right now, you got partial support in Safari, but the rest of the browsers are doing good. Um, the basic fetch request, all the browsers currently support that. Uh, caches, again, Safari and, and Edge are the two that are out right now uh, because they don't support um, Service Worker fully. Uh, again, that should change in Edge very soon. Now, Background Sync is a new feature. Right now, Chrome's the only one shipping with that. But I do know that Firefox is working on delivering that very soon, so we'll look for that. I'm not totally sure where background sync is with Edge. I've got a feeling when service workers ship, that might be one of the top priorities they've, they've got to ship with it. Uh, but I can't really uh, tell you for sure on that one. So that's like a, uh, a quick rundown of where service worker support is right now. Now, if you're wondering, because this is another big question, is, well, since Safari doesn't support it, and, and Edge doesn't support it, and obviously Internet Explorer is never going to support it uh, because Internet Explorer has been deprecated for over a year now by Microsoft. It's only around because Windows 7 can't run Edge, and enterprises have a lot of legacy websites that they can't afford to upgrade right now 
that are dependent, hard coded to work, say, in IE8 or IE9. Um, those are the, really the only reasons why you would use Internet Explorer. But uh, uh, that's never going to get any of that support because they're not adding features to that code base. Just to, just to remind you, I like to say that a lot because I think a lot of developers aren't aware of that. But uh, uh, anyway, so like I said, that's, that's kind of where things are. We'll, we're going to see new features added. Um, now, I did, we were talking about uh, uh, legacy support, iOS in particular, because they're not public about it. If I want to make Safari have some of the features, um, we've been building uh, web applications that are mobile first, offline first for most of this decade, really since it's the 2010 time frame. And we devised a mechanism to uh, essentially cache everything uh, in local storage and pull it in and out of local storage. Today though, all the browsers now support IndexedDB and that gives us an even better mechanism to persist our application assets. And we'll, we, uh, we're doing that today rather than local storage, just a little more efficient. Um, so if you want to know more about service workers, about support, how to do polyfills for the, especially the cache API, be sure to check out our course on service workers called Slaying the Dinosaur. And we look forward to hearing from you. Definitely leave comments below. And if you like the video, check the like button as well.